Football is constantly evolving, and each season brings with it some fresh ideas and tactical innovations. And no position is more emblematic of this shift than that of the playmaker. In fact, what even is a playmaker in the modern game? With assists coming anywhere from fullbacks to holding midfielders, does the traditional number 10 still exist? Well, stick around, as today we're going to be answering that question and taking a look at the evolution of the modern day playmaker. A playmaker is defined as a player who controls the flow of the team's play and is often involved in a team's offensive game and leads to goals through their creativity, technique and passing ability. We all love them, the classic number 10 that dominated the game for decades. Players such as Maradona, Ronaldinho, Kaka, Zidane and Totti. But why does it seem like it's no longer the playmaker's responsibility to create all the chances, as we witness players like Ozil, Mata and David Silva slowly fade away? Well, there's a number of different reasons, and to understand we need to take a brief history lesson. Back in the 1990s and early 2000s, the number 10 had quickly become the crucial position for any team. All offensive plays eventually went through the playmaker, making the decisive final pass for the strikers to finish the attack. In this decade, the most common formations were the 3-5-2 or even the 4-4-2 diamond, both of which include this position behind the striker. His positioning would almost always look to be between the midfield and the defence, where he could collect the ball from the defensive midfielders and move it forward. They would drift from side to side, creating overloads out wide and dictating when the ball should move into a less crowded area of the pitch. A generic heat map could look something like this, mostly in the opposition's half and rarely helping out defensively. In these decades, nearly all successful teams were built around world-class playmakers. Now, in recent years, both these formations have slowly lost their popularity. And with managers demanding more and more from each individual player, it's given way to more dynamic lineups. In the early 2000s, the most common formations would include this central position behind the strikers. However, with changing tactical trends, even these formations gave way for more dynamic and versatile lineups such as the 4-3-3 or 3-4-3 taking the center stage once again. All these lineups have one thing in common, which is the lack of a central player behind the striker. But this slight change actually allows managers to have many more options in the final third. Because now, rather than having one player in this position, a team can have a number of different players move in and out of this position. This is clear simply by looking at some of the most effective teams in the modern game. At Man City, we have De Bruyne, arguably one of the best creators in the modern game. His position will be either one of the two midzale, and acts as more of a box-to-box -box midfielder, working mostly in the half spaces and having more of a helping hand during the team's build-up. Rather than moving from side to side, a Zala's role is a lot more dynamic and covers a much bigger area of the pitch. Just one look at Kevin De Bruyne's heat map and we can see how a player that covers this much ground can cause issues for the opposition. Another great example in recent years was seen with Barcelona, where Xavi and Iniesta would move into this position and work as a double playmaker. Or Ballon d'Or winner Luka Modric as he continues to mesmerise the world as a Zala. Another very common position that has rapidly taken the place of the playmaker is the inverted winger. Some of the greatest players in the modern game with the most amount of goals and assists all play in this position. Liverpool's Mo Salah and Sadio Mane, PSG's Mbappe and Messi or Neymar, and Bayern Munich's Nabry and Sané are all excellent examples. The inverted winger tends to start out wide and then use their pace and dribbling skills to cut inside where from a more central position they can take a shot or play a pass into the striker or other winger cutting in behind the opposition's back line. The inverted winger has quickly become one of the most important positions in modern football and is seen as a far more versatile and useful player compared to a traditional winger who would hug the touchline and deliver outswinging crosses. A classic example was Man United's combo of David Beckham and Ryan Giggs. Finally, the lack of a central attacking midfielder also frees up space for a team to adopt a false nine. While it's by no means an innovative tactic, some modern teams have found some incredible success when using the false nine. Chelsea's Champions League winning formation would often feature the use of Havertz in this position, with Werner and Mount moving inside and giving more space to the wingbacks in Rhys James and Marcus Alonso to push up. Other great examples include Real Madrid's Karim Benzema, often dropping deep to link up play and free up space for Vinicius Jr and Valverde. If you want to know more about these individual positions, then check out this playlist for a more detailed description. This prevalence of inverted wingers and false nines has given rise to one of the most important providers in the modern game, the attacking fullback. No position on the pitch has been transformed as much as the modern day fullback, 
tasked with covering the length of the pitch for the entirety of the game. And with teams looking to cover central spaces that can be exploited by false nines and inverted wingers, it's given fullbacks a lot more space to work with, and are now tasked with providing deadly crosses and through balls into the box for the strikers to finish. They are the main provider of width for the team, and can quickly unlock defences with overlapping runs or by helping the team switch play. No better example can be seen than the combination of Liverpool's Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson, with a total of 22 assists and 3 goals between them this season. Chelsea's wingbacks in Rhys James and Marcus Alonso have also been crucial providers for the team, while managers such as Antonio Conte have built their whole career around the use of wingbacks, and are able to get the most out of players such as Perisic and Hakimi during his time at Inter. This combination of dynamic players and movements means that a team no longer has to rely on a single player to create all the chances, and all outfield players can share this responsibility. But wait, there's more. This isn't the only reason we've seen a decline in the number 10, and there's also been a very important tactical shift. No playmaker in the world can be as good as a good counter-pressing situation. In the past two decades, managers have placed an increasing amount of importance on the defensive game with managers such as Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola having incredible success with their aggressive high press, it's naturally led to more and more teams looking to regain possession in the opposition's half. The knock-on consequences of this change are staggering, and can be seen in both the offensive and defensive duties of the playmaker. Firstly, for the team looking to beat the press, the high defensive line means there is little space between the defence and midfield, and thus any player in this position has less time to make a pass and it's also much harder for the team to get the ball to him in the first place, as there's more players covering passing lanes and shadow marking forward options. This has naturally led to the creators in the team having to drop deeper and deeper to find more time on the ball, and help the team gain ground. It was evident that the traditional number 10 was dying when players such as Cesc Fabregas and Santi Cazorla were forced to drop deeper to find space. This shift has seen the rise of what many people now refer to as the modern playmaker, a player who sets the team's tempo in the defensive half, with excellent passing and the ability to pick out players between the lines. Rather than directly providing goals and assists, a modern playmaker is crucial for moving the ball forward with precise short and long range passes. One of the greatest deep lying playmakers was Andrea Pirlo. After Ancelotti made the decision to move him further back into the midfield, he quickly became one of the most dangerous footballers in the world, able to pick out players with incredible accuracy and get the team out of tricky situations. Other world-class examples are Barcelona's Sergio Busquets or Real Madrid's Casemiro, with Chelsea's Jorginho also becoming one of the most crucial players during their Champions League success. These players may not draw the crowds as much as an old-school number 10, but are far more versatile and useful for managers in the modern game. And the list doesn't end there, as even centre-backs are being given the opportunity of creating chances for the team, with defenders such as Van Dijk and Bonucci having the ability to break a high press and pick out the forwards in space. So the high press has meant that the team's creators are dropping deeper and deeper to find time and space on the ball. But what about the playmaker when the team is out of possession? Well, it's a similar story. With managers demanding more and more from each individual player, it's no longer enough for a player to only excel at one part of the game, and will need to be good both offensively and defensively. It's one of the main reasons as to why players such as Kevin De Bruyne, Modric and Busquets are crucial in the modern game, as their defensive work rate is fundamental to their teams. In short, it's no longer enough for a player to simply be beautiful, but will need to be part of a system. So let's go back to the original question, does the playmaker still exist? To answer that question, we're going to need the definition from the start of the video. A playmaker is someone who controls the flow of the team and leads to goals through their creativity and passing ability. Based on this definition, then yes, the playmaker has never been more present. While there's certainly been a decline in traditional number 10s, the modern game has evolved to the point that any player can become the playmaker, and is no longer the responsibility of a single individual. Now, there are obviously always some exceptions with players such as Bruno Fernandes and Thomas Müller still occupying the traditional number 10 position. But even their roles within the team have few similarities with those of number 10s from 20 and 30 years ago, and even today's playmakers still have more responsibility both in and out of possession. Now, to finish this video, I want to ask you a question. What came first? Was it a decline in number 10s which led to a tactical shift by managers, or a tactical shift by managers which led to a decline in number 10s? Let me know in the comments down below, along with any suggestions for future videos. 
As always, if you enjoyed this content, then please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching.